All right, let me read some of the comments while we're here. <clears throat> Forgot to mention the time she murdered Leah. I mean, that could have just been to throw Subaru off. Because, you know, return by death. It seems more like that she couldn't punish Subaru in the pocket dimension, so she didn't bother coming there. Instead, she decided to kill his loved ones outside of the pocket dimension. Remember that there was a moment where it was last stream, the thing cracked, which meant she was able to get into the world or the barrier or whatever. So basically, if she can't punish you there, then I'll punish your friends instead. Yeah, it's what I would do. Oh, you never actually have my phone's wallpaper. Neat. Excuse me? Goddamn, Roswell is built. Oh yeah, he's... He's built, but the only thing I have to ask is... The fuck's going on here? His biceps and his shoulders are lacking. He's got his abdominal muscles, and his legs are not very toned. But his arms and shoulders are lacking. Like... They're really lacking. Never actually noticed. Um, what I think happened here is, considering that Sekhmet is the one who was in charge of making this place, she opened the door for other witches to enter this dimension. But because she's lazy, she didn't close the door, and that's how Satella could get in. Also explains why this pla place is so empty, because she's so lazy. <clears throat> that's good. Actually, is Return by Dead time travel multiverse jump? is still up for debate. Novel readers got sort of confirmation of which is true, but it is a bit subtle, like 80% probability being true. So feel free to speculate. All right, episode 12. And the whole multiverse time rewind, I think it's a little bit naive to think that it's a time rewind when you're dealing with some people that are aware of its existence. It doesn't seem like a time rewind. It is more probable multiverse. And I think the last episode more or less showcased that it's multiverse. Because Satella seems to be able to see what's going on. And if she wasn't able to see the probabilities, it, it doesn't make sense that it's multiverse. Sorry, it makes sense that it's a time rewind. It makes more sense that it's a multiverse with Subaru's conscience jumping into the body and either overriding or swapping with whoever's there. And in order to tie up loose ends, it would make more sense that his consciousness drops and absorbs the consciousness of the timeline he's jumping into, because up until that point, the memories stay the same, which is why there would be a checkpoint. That's what I would think. That, that would be one way to tie off the loose ends. <clears throat> At least that's how I would think it. But that's just me. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. But that's just me. Why am I drinking coffee in one hand and beer in the other one? Because that's how we do it. This also raises the question. Does there exist only one Satella across all the timelines? It is possible that when she absorbed um, the power of the other witches, she became... I don't want to say omnipresent, but a, a bit like my theory that God is a fourth dimensional being where time and space don't really matter. I think Satella is able to access the different timelines. Not in that she's in all of them, but I think her consciousness isn't bound to one. Except she doesn't need to die to do it. Because she's manipulating Subaru's hopping through the multiverse. It showcases that she has the ability to influence it. Which means she herself should be able to go from one to the other. It's just a theory. Akuma theory. Alright, episode 13. And this is part one, so I am expecting good shit. And thank God for working from home. Don't get drunk now. From a beer? Hell, even Hutchins working her way up to be able to drink a whole beer. Man, you should see Hutchins on alcohol. 
She's like the Witch of Lust. <laughs> Remember how I was like punishing her for making fun of me? <laughs> I denied her yesterday. And then like she went into this whole rampage. And I'm like, you do realize why I'm doing this, right? And she's like, why? I'm like, you insulted me. And she's like, I insult you all the time. What are you talking about? And I told her when. And she's like, I don't even remember that. And I'm like, yeah, I figured as much. But, you know, still. Yeah, I'm not in the mood. And she's just like, what? And I'm like, yeah. Nah, not in the mood. My ego's fucked, man. Um, I will set a notification to remind you that Talk in 10 years when all ReZero gets animated. Depends who you are. Some people have higher tolerance than other people. Imagine you're like Virgil and you're a lightweight. And I missed your entire talk. My internet lagged. You can just watch it in Patreon. It'll be up within the week. Ah, uh, poor Hutchin. Oh no, I like thinking about this sort of shit. It's totally up my alley. I'm enjoying this. I'm fucking loving this. I'm the type of person... Like, I'm the type of person that really loves to jump down the rabbit hole... And if it tickles my fancy, I love it. The deeper the rabbit hole, the better. The worst thing for me is when there's an absolute yes or no. The author needs to know where they're going with it. But I'm the type of person that likes to try to figure it out. I don't like to just get through it as quickly as possible to get to the answer. I like to actually think and have my stab at it. And if I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It doesn't really matter. But I like... I like the process. I really do. I really do. A witch of lust backstory is sad that her lover and her people went crazy for her and killed and destroyed her whole kingdom. Yes. That's what lust does. It's destructive. Just like power and wrath and greed and sloth and all those other things. They're highly destructive when not controlled. Impulse control is a big thing. It's like overeating. It can be delicious at the beginning, but you get diabetes if you don't. So, you know, like wrath. It's good if you get vengeance, bad if you destroy the whole planet. So you got to stop at the genocide phase. Are you enjoying season two more than season one so far? It's not fair to ask if I enjoy season one or two more. Because season one had to build the foundation on which season two stands. Season one needed to go through that whole process of easing you in the first few episodes to get you interested before it flipped it on its head. And I really did enjoy that. And then we went through a little bit of the world building with the princesses and the Camilla bitch of the desert and all that sort of stuff. It was necessary, but I didn't really enjoy those few episodes. But I'm not going to say that season one is not as good as season two. Because season one is the foundation, and I'm not about to bag out the foundation. Think of season one as plowing the ground, planting the seeds, and watering them. Season two is the tree sprouting and the fruit growing. I'm not about to say that the fruit tastes delicious, and I prefer it to plowing the ground and planting the seeds. Without that, you wouldn't get the fruit. So, you know what I mean? I'm having a lot more fun. Mm. To be fair, um, Sloth and that whole thing about trying to figure out how his power works. When Amelia started dying, Sloth's fingers started killing. When the, when the plot started, you know, hitting third gear, that's when it really got fun for me. Up until that point, I was kind of... Yeah, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, he's dying, he's doing shit, he's chasing a half-elf girl because he's a teenager. Yeah, sure, why not? But when shit started getting real, at the point when Rem literally turned into Twister, I was like, oh, fuck. And then the next few episodes, like, everyone started getting slaughtered. And I was like, oh, shit. It's not just Amelia dying or Subaru dying. It was fucking anyone can die. That's when it felt real. That's when the plot started really kicking off for me. That's where I really started enjoying. Up until that point, it was sort of enjoyable, but it was still... Mm, it was still light. It was light. You know, one or two people dying here and there. <sniffs> Fucking everyone dying. 
painfully, miserably, being contorted, twisted, broken apart. That's when it really got interesting. And then season two kicks off, well, okay, have more witches, have more bitches, have pocket dimensions, have all this other stuff. And I'm like, shit, fuck yeah. But without season one, none of that would make sense. This season is what I love because you have to think a lot to figure stuff out. And every episode of the season gives you a lot of information to think about. Which is why I'm taking my time with this. If I was to rush through this, I would miss 90% of it. If I didn't stop to discuss certain one-liners and try to figure out what Subaru is going for and what the witches are going for, I wouldn't be enjoying it nearly as much as I am. It's because I'm stopping to digest as much as I possibly can and committing pretty much most, if not all, of my brain power in the back end thinking about what things could mean. I, I, I'm, I'm gripped. I'm like, my claws are in. I'm paying attention to what they're saying. And I'm thinking about the characters. And I'm remembering the characters. Not their names, but like everything else. I'm remembering the deaths. I'm remembering what they said. I'm remembering what happened. I'm paying attention. If I wasn't, I'd miss half the shit. And, I'm, I, and I hope you guys can see that. Because a lot of people give me shit for talking too much about anime and stuff. But it's because I'm paying attention. I'm thinking about it. So, yeah. Like, it, it should be obvious. I hope. <laughs> Otherwise, I just sound like a crazy person. <laughs> I mean, I'm crazy, but like... I'm normal enough to be able to pay attention rationally. Sometimes I miss it, but yeah. Like, mm. You have to be a certain level of crazy to appreciate certain things. You are crazy. Well... I actually have a report from a forensic psychiatrist saying that I'm sane. So out of all the people here in this chat, I'm the only one with a report and certification that says I'm normal. So technically, you're the crazy ones. You self-proclaimed normal people. How about you guys go to a forensic psychiatrist and get tested for your sanity? I mean... Crazy people don't know that they're crazy. I know that I'm crazy, therefore I'm not crazy. All right, let's continue. See, I like this outfit. I like it. Purple aura, black clothing, and gold. It's royal. It's, it's the dark type of royal. But purple is a royal color. It's the combination of blue and red. It was reserved for royalty because it's so difficult to get. Red is power. Blue is temperance. Purple is a mixture of both. It's a royal color. It was very expensive. It's still expensive, but not as expensive as it was. Back in the day, in the days of, you know, castles and shit, if you had purple silk, you know, money, money. And I got to admit, it's somewhat elegant. It is somewhat elegant, except the fact that it looks like she's going to a funeral. That's the only thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure she wants you. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't figured that out. You just got to say the magic words. I like penis. Wait a minute, you said everyone cry. So you're able to see him dying?
Ungrateful? Excuse me? Did she not kill you? Hmm? Hmm? What? Anyone notice the very subtle wind-up music that's playing in the background? And it's slowed down and distorted. Almost like it's being played backwards. Okay, wicked bitches of the West that have been around for how many hundreds of years and have how much power? You tried dying 2,000 times. I mean, granted, it's a little bit embarrassing, but like... I don't know. He's beyond his breaking point. The kid's been broken and Humpty Dumpty's put back together again, but he's still fucking broken. I mean, at this point, the glass has been shattered so many times, it's almost sand. Well, what? You gotta break him now, too? Oh, shit. The little one. What's she? She's pride, right? What, lap pillow? What? Wait, he gave her everything. What did he give her? But if what? Gave him everything. That sounds like a statement that I shouldn't just ignore. Hold that thought. Uh, 422. What episode did they do? 422. 422. 
Hold that thought. 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 Could it be? They have white hair, but I don't see anyone resembling the witch. No, that's just me. All good. I thought that it's very possible that in his room, he had a figurine of Amelia or one of the other witches. And this whole world is brought into existence by his imagination or some shit. Because he's into whitehead girl so much that this is some kind of wet dream. But no, that was just me. All good in the hood. Alright, back to it. It was worth a shot. Oh. What? Did he bite off his tongue? The fuck? Wow, she just fucking KO'd Wrath. I'm legitimately curious, are you actually able to bite off your tongue and bleed to death? Wait, you can't see the two trials? Seriously? Your mum's weird talking about suppositories in your butt. I have to I have to admit something. It's really good that these Twitch thoughts are taking all the heat on Twitch. As long as they keep uh, all the attention on them, we can keep doing Anime Monday as long as we want. Let's continue. Wait, that was Rem. Wasn't that Rem? That was Amelia. Oof. Did he just resurrect in the thing? Did it just save the timeline? Oh no, but he literally went here right after respawning. So even if he is here after dying, resetting, he should be fine.
Damn, that Windows background's looking good. Does he wash that tracksuit? Huh? What do you mean saved? What? What the fuck? What the fuck is this harem bullshit? What is that Jin Ichimaru smile? <laughs> Oof. What a gentle rejection. Am I the only one thinking, why the fuck is Satella just sitting there patiently? Like, what the fuck? I mean, aren't they supposed to be at each other's throats? Did Satella not technically kill all the other witches and absorb their essence? Why are they being so friendly friendly with her? Something doesn't add up. Something's not adding up.
Now Subaru, you abuse that. Abuse it, damn it! Seriously, Satella's just fucking sitting there. What the hell? Eh, what are you doing? If Satella is not the main antagonist, who is? If she, oh fuck me. Am I at the beginning? No, I'm at the end. Who sets the tell as an antagonist at all? Oh, you sons of bitches. So let me guess this straight. Someone in the world branded the big bad witch the enemy of the people and made up a story that she killed all her sisters. Sounds like a convincing story. Who's gonna say otherwise? And she's dead, so she can't say otherwise. And... They all feel Amelia because of this story. So who has the most to gain from this story? Oh, I'm drawing blanks here. This is a completely different line of thinking I wasn't expecting. Because the witches don't seem to be angry at Stella at all. I mean, they're dead. That's That much is apparent. But they don't seem to be upset with Satella. Which seems to indicate that she's not the one that killed them. Because I don't know about you, but if someone killed me, I'd be somewhat upset. So... And she's giving him return by death. He's not supposed to tell anyone about it. The assumption is that he can't because it will showcase that the witch is doing something to him. But what if the opposite's true? He's not supposed to tell it so that the person that she's trying to save him from doesn't find out that the witch is helping him. Which means the assassins are being sent by someone other than the witch's cult. But Satella discarded Sloth. So either he was a pawn that she doesn't care about, or what he's doing doesn't align with what she wants. Which brings the question, what are those two, three powerful guys that took Rem out even doing? And are they the ones sending the assassins out? 
because someone wanted to steal Amelia's insignia, which is what she needs in order to be recognized as a candidate for the kingdom. So whatever they're going after is to stop Amelia because they killed her in multiple timelines. The only times they didn't kill her is when she was around Roswell and whoever the fuck. The other opportunities, they killed her. So it definitely has something to do with Amelia and they don't want her becoming a ruler of the kingdom because if she does become the ruler of the kingdom, it somehow inhibits their plan. So there is one possibility that one of the other candidates is pulling the strings from the shadows. The only other option is that they just want to stop Amelia from being in charge at all costs. Going by that, the only one that didn't assist with the whale was Priscilla. Now we chalk that up to her being greedy, but maybe that's not the case. Hmm. See, this is a completely different line of thinking I never even considered. Because up until this point, Satella was always public enemy number one in my eyes. If she's no longer public enemy number one, then my entire line of thinking needs to change. Oof. Satella is saving Subaru because if people like Roswell find out how it works, they will abuse Subaru for his power. True. Uh, Beetle guys having sloth witch factor, yet not being affiliated with Sekhmet, also proves these witches might have nothing to do with the cult at all. True. And another thing is, being, a so uh, a so being associated with the witches gives the cult power. Because everyone assumes they're associated with the witches. But the witches aren't around to tell people otherwise. So they're basically borrowing their names of power. Similar to how, I don't know, fucking radicalized people use the name of God to make people blow themselves up. Okay, there's some info now that this tea party ended. If Subaru accepted the contract, that would unlock greed IF story. Should I be reading this? What happens is Echidna tells him what to do, and if that doesn't work, he kills himself. I could have fucking told him that. Um, according to the author's Q&A, she makes him loop over 10,000 times before he arrives at the ending he wanted. I could have fucking told him that. I've been telling him to kill himself for the past 10,000 times. When in doubt, kill yourself. Um, Alright, scrolling up. Uh, there is huge content from this episode which explains the teller's behavior, but anime cut it out. If you want, we can tell you. It explains the situation. It makes me question, because I remember you guys said there's a director's cut version um, of season one, but my question is, is there a director's cut version of season two? And my question is, is there a season three? He died like over a million times in that route. Greed IF isn't a happy story. Subaru is completely fucked up by the loops. Well, he's not slov enough to survive death 10,000 times. Season 1 got director's cut because season 2 was 4 years after season 1. So director's cut was like refresher. So is there a season 3? Because if there isn't, I can use my Kuma powers to make a season 3 happen. No season three yet? Don't worry, there'll be a season three. My 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 Kuma powers my Kuma powers work wonders. My Kuma powers work wonders. There are eleven arcs. So how many arcs per season? Is it two arcs a season? We'll we'll make it happen. I'm a magical Kuma. Season one, arc one to three. Season 3 has not been announced, but it's probably going to happen. Season 2, Arc 4. Season 2 is only one arc! 
Well, that would explain the pacing. Rizir is currently at 7 RN. Orthon wants to make 11. He'll make 13. Watch it happen. Watch it happen. He's making a story about witches. They'll be 13. They'll be 13. Watch it happen. Arc 4 is the longest. I'm a magical Kuma. Trust me, season 3 will happen. Watch me. The fucking twist the thumbnail will reignite the flames. All right, back to it. Episode 13. Oh, speak of the devil and she doth appear. Because she loves you, you dumbass. You can speak to it. He really is that clueless. I mean, Cheeky would just leave me to die. Cheeky is loyal to herself and only herself. Cheeky is the epitome of, I'll let you rub my titties until someone better comes along. She's a survivor. Wow, he started crying. Hug the bird, damn it! Are you stupid? Are you are, are you stupid? He's stupid. Wow, he he actually sustained brain damage. He he fucking sustained brain damage. Wow. Holy shit, he sustained brain damage. I'm sorry, did you forget about REM? Did you forget about... Uh, what's the fucking name? Satella? Or did you forget about all the other people? Jesus Christ, he has brain damage. Self-hate? I mean, I hate myself too, but I'm not oblivious to the outside world. Give her a hug, damn it! Man, at this rate, they're gonna stop being Tomodachi and they're gonna start being Homodachi. Ooh, thank you, Exact. Much appreciated. By the way, we have a vote on which game we're playing next, so make sure you hook up your Twitch to your Discord and vote. Let me know if you don't know how to do it. I'll help you hook it up. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What just fucking happened? Ah? Huh? Uh? The fuck was that? So you're not eligible for the third trial. Well, that's what happens when you don't sleep with the witch in charge of the trials. How do you think Camilla Harris got into being thingo in politics? There's a reason why they call her Heels Up Harris. Lots of blowjobs. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you rejected the wicked bitch of the West. <laughs> you reject me, I reject you. That's how it works. You just got fucked, and not in the hot way. S 
Subaru, offer her sex. It's the only way. He failed the second trial? Did he fail? I thought he passed. Eh. Yeah. Oh well. You better not just run back in there, that's stupid. Seriously, are you gonna go back in there? Or are you gonna call out for the witch? Oh god, it's Marilyn Manson again. Uh, do I call him Orochimaru or Marilyn Manson? I don't know, both are the same at this point. Seriously? Ooh. Oh yeah, she has to watch it every single time he dies. Yeah, Subaru, you've been a dick to Satella, and then you rejected her. You're a bad person, Subaru. You should at least give her a pity fuck at least once or twice. Come on. But no, instead you stab yourself in front of her. What a guy. What? The fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Excuse me, did you just quote Alex Straza from World of Warcraft War Crimes? Excuse me? When did this book come out? He literally just quoted Alex Straza. When did this book come out? I need to know. Two thousand fourteen. Let me look it up. World of Warcraft War Crimes. Do 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 Oh you motherfucker. Guys, I need to know because World of Warcraft War Crimes came in May 6, 2014. What the fuck? What what came first? I need to know. He literally quoted Alex Straza. He literally quoted Alex Straza. 2013? There's some shenanigans going on here, buddy. 
There's uh there's some shenanigans going on here. Oh my god, your boys is at it again. Thanks, man. Jesus. <laughs> Alex Straza stole it from ReZero. Uh to be fair, Alex Straza went through more. She went through a lot worse. She went through worse than just the bunnies. Trust me on that. Trust me on that. Oh boy. Which means he sent the assassins in the first few episodes. I was gonna say, he keeps struggling to save everyone. Maybe the entire point of all this is for him to actually make a choice. You motherfucker. <laughs> Why does he sound like he's about to stop time? Kuma, are you the first person to recognize this? No? Surely I'm not the first person. But he was itching at me. He keeps trying to save everyone. And then Satella's like, put yourself first. And he's like, no, I must save all of them. And then she's like... No, you need to literally start thinking about yourself because people are sad when you die. It's not just everyone, but you're one of the people that you need to focus on saving. And he's like, no, I'm going to keep killing myself because Subaru. And then this shit comes out. I was starting to believe that it's possible that Roswell is a son of a bitch, but I didn't think he would have been hiring the assassins. Remember after the third Subaru ringside in the Mashin, Ark Roswell just up and flew away somewhere despite not having done that before in previous loops? I have seen every single ReZero reaction on YouTube and no one else expected you realize that the fact Roswell hired Elsa to steal him from season one. How the fuck is that possible? If he hired her for the mansion, he must have hired her for the first season. Because who else would be her employer? I mean... How many fucking customers do you think an assassin has? They only need one or two customers to make a killing. See what I did there? But, like... I know, but you're one of the only ones who realized it. Well, they're obviously not paying attention. Because it's pretty hard to fucking miss. Four hundred years ago. Betty has been guarding the place for four hundred years. Who the fuck enchanted you? Joke's on you, I've been born insane. I 
I would say spoon out his eyes, but I don't think that would phase him considering up raped by bunny rabbits. I think Roswell started suspecting Subaru's looping in S1. Everything around him worked out far too perfectly. Really? I mean, he had the book after all. What? Really? He's begging? Wow, that's the next level of desperation. And he doesn't know the fact that he lost the trial. So the whole thing about him doing the trial was a bluff. He wanted him to do the trial, not realizing that he has lost his ability to do so. He's trying to lead him down a path. But he realized that there's no point to lying to him. Because it's a dead end. So by just literally saying he can't do it, it throws his entire thing out of the works. What if Roswell sent the assassins because it was written in the book? Doesn't that mean everything happening according to Echidna's plans? Who said that the book is written by Echidna? Are you the... It's going to be really fucked up if they're the same person. It doesn't sound logical, but... Funny coming from the guy that literally punctured her through the heart. Am I the only one that would be calling Satella at a time like this? I mean, pretty sure she's listening. Just saying. I'd be calling Satella right now. Real question is, what the fuck does Roswell want? And don't tell me it's just to kill a goddamn dragon. There's more to it than that. What would that do, though? I don't fucking know. Maybe she has a suggestion. Maybe she knows someone. Maybe she has some power to stop an assassin. I don't fucking know. No, they can't be the same person. Roswell isn't that insane. No, Roswell is completely insane. He's beyond the point of fuck it. The point is that he's stuck in a loop, in a fucked point. He can go back to the mansion, the assassin will attack. There's a second assassin in the town. And then if he leaves, Amelia's gonna go completely insane. The problem is, is that Amelia doesn't have the mental fortitude to survive. And if she stays there, fucking Orochi Manson will start the blizzard or the snowstorm, turn the people on her, and just turn up the heat. If he stays here, the mansion's fucked. 
If he leaves here, Amelia's fucked. There is something that is getting me. The the specific date of the attack in the mansion. When he went to save them, the killer, whose name I forgot, let's call her Big Tits. Big Tits said that she didn't expect him to arrive so soon. It wasn't a going according to schedule. And she was instructed to commit murder on like day four or whatever the fuck. So Roz was built in a situation where if he takes his time to do the trials beyond X amount of days, he will be too late. He's done trial two, by the way. If he leaves, um, Amelia is fucked. And as soon as he said he lost his ability to do the trials, Roswell twisted the knife. From that, I'd say it's safe to deduce that Roswell wants him to do the trials. Because Amelia can't. He knows Amelia can't. He wants Subaru to do the trials. Why? I don't fucking know. But assuming that Subaru can do the trials, he can theoretically do them back to back. He did the first one, woke up, loop, 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 loop. He just attempted the second one, not even, I don't know, a minute after the first one in the timeline. He can theoretically do all four and, you know, rescue all of the Pokemon and lead them to safety and go back to the mansion. But that requires him to be tough as nails. Which seems to go along with what Orochi Manson is saying. He's disappointing him time and time again. And he wants his resolve to be strong. And he wants him to discard what Amelia wants. In order to do what Amelia needs. So... Him saying that he has to choose... Is technically not right. By controlling the options... He's forcing Subaru to come to the conclusion that the only way to save both is to complete the trials quick as fuck, get Amelia out of there and get to the mansion before the assassin does her work on day three or four. That seems to be the only way. That's my theory. Basically, if anything deviates from the book, Roswell summons the blizzard to terminate the timeline. He wants Subaru to abandon the mission and do the trial for Amelia so Amelia world becomes dependent on him. Fair enough. All three and all four. Subaru failed the second trial and the witches bailed him out of the tea party. He wants Subaru to be the hero, it seems. See, that goes along with the theory that I was just spouting a few seconds ago. My question is still why? He's Amelia's sponsor... Yet, he wanted to stop her from take. So keep your enemies close, right? Why is he jeopardizing Amelia, though? To have Amelia under... He's more... He's more... He's more making her fail. Why does Amelia pose a threat? What does Amelia becoming the ruler of the kingdom threaten him with? That's the question. What does he stand to lose? I I have to reverse engineer the scenario now. What is he standing to lose if Amelia is the hero? The people love her. He's in charge of that area. But he doesn't stand to lose. She would have access to the dragon who Roswell wants to kill. But how is that a problem if the dragon's a problem? Why would having access to it be an issue? Unless Emilia would defend the dragon. I don't know, I'm still a bit far off. I need a few more pieces to this jigsaw puzzle. I, I need a few more pieces. At this point, I'm just throwing shit at the wall. And you don't know why Roswell wants the dragon dead. 
Yeah, but I could fucking deduce shit, can't I? He had a, gra- he had a grandmother. Could his grandmother have been killed by a dragon? Could his parents have been killed by a dragon? Is he half a fucking dragon? Like, we, we could start guesstimating and from it trying to figure out what his motivation is. I mean, sure, technically we don't know the answer, but that's half the fun, isn't it? Did he get raped by a dragon? Maybe that's why he doesn't have any problem with the bunnies. He's already tra- taken dragon dick up his ass. But we don't know. Because the ruler of Lunisia gets access to the dragon, but saying anything more than that will be spoilers. Well, that's already a big enough hint. Shouldn't have said that. Bad boy. No, he's not Donkey from Shrek and Donkey. Damn it, Subaru, you're wasting time. That's it, kill yourself. Atta boy. I've never seen anyone accurately predict the reason yet. I don't think it's possible. There's a lot of information missing. Challenge accepted. If I get this, I'm fucking taking all the bragging rights that go with it. Kill yourself. The fuck now? Ah, it's Homodachi. Have you been crying in the forest? Is he gonna kill him? He's gonna kill him! He's gonna kill him! He's gonna stab him! Oh, he told him to harden the fuck up. That was unexpected. You guys are so gay for each other. I could see it. Go for it. I don't care. <laughs> the fucking bromance going on there, man. <laughs> the fucking bromance going on there, man. I was expecting a stab. This 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 anime, like when when the camera went above him, when the camera went on this angle, or is it? When the camera went on this angle, I was expecting us to literally see a knife come out of this side. It's an odd time for Cheeky to be barking at the front door. Uno momento. Hey, did I hand you a shrinking potion by accident? I could have sworn that was the gender swapping one. Don't be hating. She's fun sized, that's all. She doesn't even have to get on her knees to blow. You want to add anything to that conversation? Nope, I'm good. In fact, I think your new size makes you an even more formidable and stealthy ninja.